Forrest, no one's ever going to say that they're typecasting you. You do everything. Oh uh, yeah, I'm pretty lucky. You pretty much take, try to diversify it, don't you? I, I try to uh, take things that are interesting to me. Sometimes you, you do something and then you don't want to go explore that again, so then you, you go find something else you know, to keep growing and stuff like that. You pretty much like that away from the movies? You have a lot of diverse interests? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know, diverse. I mean, I, I, I just do normal things. I read or write, I paint, I, you know, dive. I, you know, Watch I TV? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Not, not a lot, really, but sometimes. Try to stay away from that? Just time, you know, yeah, so I, I can fill my time with a lot of things. What do you do things. on a day off? I mean, if you had like two or three days where you're not scheduled to be anywhere, no one really wants you to be anywhere, and you're going to take off, how are you going to rest? What do you do? Is it dream day? Dream day. Oh, man, I've been waiting for one. Uh, I would, uh, I think I'd go down to Mexico, join the Caribbean part, probably, uh, just chill on the beach, eat some papayas, only like fruits and stuff, and dive all day, lay out on the beach, just, just chilling. Maybe, maybe bring one book I really like, you know, maybe. You know, I, I might not want to even let my mind go there. I might just forget the sunset or something, you know? But a lot of us are so used to hurrying. Can you be a good slug if you need to? If you can just, <coughs> can you just cut it off? Or take a couple of days? Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I, I've hardly taken any vacations in my whole life, you know. I normally, even if I'm not working as an actor, if you know, I'm doing something else. So I guess I'm not that good at it, you know. Um, but I, I like it. I want to. Um, I want to take one right now, actually, from the work I'm doing, because I'm kind of tired, but uh, I think it's wearing me down a little bit, but I, I'm excited still, you know. Yeah, we do need to recharge sometimes, though. It's probably good for us. You always have to. can't even reassess your life. can't yeah. even reassess anything, you know, so you have to at least take some moment to, like, grow, you know. If you stray something, it's like working out with weights or something. If you overextend your muscles, you don't continue to get in better shape. You just start to harm yourself. This movie is a, is a scary movie. It's one of those you kind of have to either go like this occasionally or you scream or do something if you get really caught up in it. Right. When you were a little boy out here in uh, Southern California, did you go to scary movies? Psycho, The Blob, uh, <laughs> I remember, Alien? I remember like The Blob and stuff like that on TV. I never went to a walk-in theater. I mean, that's what I called it when I was a kid. You know, like where you go in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. You know, we went to drive-ins when I was a kid. It's cheaper, you know, until I was like in my second year of high school. So. <laughs> I didn't really go to many movies. I, I mean, love the drive-ins. I'm sorry that kids today can't really go too much. It's great. Have to. I, I, cause the whole family get in the car and then you drive there. You can bring your own food. You know, you chill. Put your blanket on. You know, watch the watch the movie. I used to out. go in the trunk occasionally. Did you ever do that? Sneak into the trunk. Always sneak in. Well, when we got too old to go in them for free, then we'd have to kind of like lay on the floor a little bit. You know, but <laughs> or try to scoot down in a chair. And then not to mention the great <laughs> dates that would take place at the drive-in. That was one of the all-time great date spots. Yeah, I guess so. I never. I was. I mean, it was like high school when I finally went to a walk-in. Didn't have a car, so I couldn't borrow my dad. So it was kind of like, <laughs> you know, not not happening that way. But it seems like it's like I could see it being perfect. You know, mm. perfect. Science fiction. You believe some of this stuff could happen? Could this movie happen? I hope it doesn't happen, but it could. In this form, uh, everything's possible. I would tend to think that it would be in the form of. Uh, some f alien life that would come here that being unaware so that they could harm would harm, you know, not as much. Because we can't go to their life, their, li their planet, and, their, and, and understand their, their ways of thinking will be with them. In order for them to get here, they have to be more advanced than us. And I would think, hopefully, as we advance, you know, we wouldn't be coming somewhere to harm. And uh, so I would think that they would want to do that. Do you think we've ever been visited? <coughs> I've, I've heard people tell me. I remember once I was in like, I was away on this retreat. This lady was telling me all about this and this government stuff. It's, it's possible, you know. It's it's possible. She was, you know, I could tell from the bottom of her soul she believed yeah. it. There yeah. are certain people who have no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Not too far from here in the desert of Nevada, they say there've been spaceships landed out there. And I believe I believe it. You know, I believe it's it's probably happened. You know, because I definitely believe there's other there's other life forms out there in the universe. Now, your character in this movie is, they call him empath, is that what they were? Yeah. And he kind of like has a little ESP, is that in summary what it is? Like he can yeah, forecast I mean, things? Yeah, extrasensory perception. Yeah, I guess so. He can feel people's uh, emotions and, their, and some of their thoughts and experience some things that they have. And what about that? Do you believe that's true? That I know is true. I, know. I mean, because that is a normal thing in life, to be able to have empathy or 
feelings towards something, to be able to see somebody and look at them and say, what's wrong? And everything about them visually appears to be perfect and fine. They're going through their daily chores, sitting at their desk, talking on the phone, answering calls. But you know yourself that something is wrong. You know, they're sad. And then they walk into your office or you bring them away and they start to cry and they start to tell you the story. So what told you to, to, to be able to connect with that? What told you that, that was there? You know what I mean? Or you hear some sounds and the person is clearly trying to sound very normal but on the phone and you say, you say, hey, is your, is your, are you okay? Or you can go as deep as saying, is your, is your relationship okay? Or what's, and you, you know, you can say, you guys are doing okay, right? Just because they said, well, he went up the street for a minute and he'll, he'll be back in an hour. And all of a sudden you say, well, not for sure. Because we naturally have some kind of feelings. We understand when people uh, are sad or connect with people in life, you know, and, and, and we naturally feel other people's emotions. When people laugh to the bottom of their soul, immediately you want to laugh too. Something connects with you. If you, if you, people cry and you don't even understand. If you see a man on the corner who's just weeping, a part of you weeps too. You know, I mean, uh, in that way, yeah, I think so. Being in, being in touch with what's going on around you. Yeah. Nice seeing you again, Forrest. Nice seeing you too. Thank you. All right. Bye. <coughs>